Hello everyone, welcome to Storytime Online. My name is Stacy. I'm a youth program specialist for the Orange County Library System, and I'm so excited you're joining me today. Our story time today is going to focus on every child ready to read, and that means we're gonna focus on the early literacy practices of reading, writing, singing, talking, playing, and counting. And we encourage you to do the same with your child every day as well. Let's begin with our welcome song. We're gonna begin by clapping. Can you clap along with me? We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. Very good, now we're going to wave. Can you wave with me? We wave and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we wave and sing hello. Good job, one more. We're gonna stomp this time. Can you stomp with me? We stomp and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we stomp and sing hello. Great job, everyone. Now we want to talk about our letter of the day. Do you think you know maybe what our letter of the day today is? You're right, I do have a letter right here. Do you know what letter this is? B, very good. Do you know what sound B makes? B. Awesome job. B is for B. And let's see if we can figure out what are some things that start with the letter B. I have some things. I have broccoli. Broccoli starts with the letter B. And what else starts with the letter B? Maybe your name starts with the letter B. Mine doesn't. A bell. Bell starts with the letter B and a ball. Ball also starts with the letter B. And what else starts with the letter B? Yes, baby. Baby starts with the letter B. And also my Bs are the color brown, which also starts with the letter B. Do you wanna practice writing the letter B with me? Awesome. All you're going to need is your pointer finger. I'm going to trace it on the board and then we'll draw it in the air together. Let's see. First, I'm gonna take my pointer finger. I'm gonna start with my uppercase B or capital B. Start at the top and draw a line all the way down to the bottom. Pick up my finger, go back to the top and curve around to the middle. And then we're going to curve around one more time to the bottom. Very good, let's draw it in the air. A straight line from top to bottom, and then we're gonna curve around from the top to the middle, and curve around one more time from the middle to the bottom. Awesome job. Now we have the lowercase b. It's close, but not exactly the same. Once again, I've got my pointer finger ready. Start from the top to the bottom, make a stick, and then we're not gonna go all the way to the top this time to curve around. We're just gonna go to the middle and curve around. Very good, let's try it again in the air. A straight line down, pick up my pencil or your finger, and then curve around from the middle to the bottom. Awesome job, that's the letter B, B. So today, I have something else that starts with the letter B. Let's see if you can figure out what it is. This is what we're gonna talk about all today. Here. Do you think you know what it is? Bears. Very good. These are some bears. Will you count with me how many bears I have? Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. Now let's count in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Do you know what bear is in Spanish? They say oso, cinco osos, or five bears. I have one more way to say bear for you, and it's in sign language. Do you know the sign for bear? You're gonna take your two claws, your hands, make them into claws, and cross them over your shoulders and scratch. Ready, we'll do it again. Bear, one more time. Bear. So oso, bear, or bear. 
So we have our five bears here today, and bear does start with the letter B. Let's talk about these bears. Maybe you know they're all different kinds of bears. The reason I like to talk about bears is they live all over the world and come in many shapes and sizes, just like people. This first bear here, does anyone know what this bear is? It's a koala bear. I have a secret for you. Koala bears aren't actually bears. They're marsupials and they live in Australia, but they look like bears, so they got that nickname. We'll count them as an honorary bear today. In Australia, they like to eat eucalyptus leaves, which is something that is very common there. This is the polar bear. Polar bears are the biggest of all the bears and they live up north in the Arctic Circle where it's very cold. What kind of bear is this? A panda bear, that's right. Panda bears live in China and they like to eat bamboo leaves. Their, their numbers are getting smaller and smaller. So as humans, we have to do a good job to try to take care of their homes. This bear, is the brown bear, also known as the grizzly bear. This is the second biggest bear, right after the polar bear. He lives all over the world in very cold places, including the United States, but not in Florida. It doesn't get cold enough here for him. He likes the snow. And lastly, we have the American black bear. This bear lives all over the United States as well, but this bear does live in central Florida. What's really interesting about this bear is he is the smallest actual bear, not as small as a koala bear, but smaller than these three bears. And this bear will eat almost anything, garbage they found on the ground, berries, leaves, all kinds of stuff, all right? So these are our five bears today. Okay, so now I'm gonna ask you to get up and play with me. We're gonna work on using those gross motor skills, all right? Maybe you've heard this tune before. It goes to teddy bear, teddy bear, but we're gonna use our actual bears today, all right? So the first one is koala bear. Koala bear, koala bear, turn around. Very good. Polar bear, polar bear, Touch the ground. Can you touch your toes without bending your knees? Great job. Panda bear, panda bear, reach up high. Reach, 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 reach. And brown bear, brown bear, jump to the sky. Can you jump with me? Let's jump two times. One, two, great job. Black bear, black bear, make a sound. Grr, can you growl like a black bear would or any bear? Grr, good job. Now all of our bears can sit down. Very good. We're going to do it one more time. Are you ready? All right, stand back up with me. Koala bear, koala bear, turn around. Polar bear, polar bear, touch the ground, touch the ground. Panda bear, panda bear, reach up high. Brown bear, brown bear, jump for the sky. One and two jumps. Black bear, black bear, make a sound, grrr. And now all of our bear friends can sit down. Awesome job. So that is our play part today. We like to stand up and get the blood flowing and the muscles working. It's very good exercise. So next I have a story for you. And this story is all about the bear. Maybe you've seen a bear before. And maybe you know what bear's tail looks like, all right? Bear has a short little poof of a tail. But guess what? My story today says that wasn't always the case. I am going to tell you today the legend of how the bear lost his tail. This is a Native American legend and it goes back way, way, way long time ago. This story has been told for very, very many years. So Bear, at one point in time, did not always have a short tail. He actually had a long, 
fluffy, bushy, beautiful tail. And he liked to show it off to all of his friends. He liked to show his bird friends and his fish friends and his other bear friends. And he, of course, showed his friend the fox, who also has a beautiful bushy tail. One day, Fox said to himself, that bear, I think I am going to play a trick on him. Because as you know, foxes are known for the tricks they like to play on their friends. So Bear, he is hanging out, not bothering anybody. Fox goes to the lake, and it's the winter time. So the lake has frozen over, and he decides, I think Bear is gonna come this way today. I'm gonna try to get his attention and play a trick on him today. So the way he decides to get his attention is he stacks up some fish. Bear loves to eat fish. So Fox catches some fish and stacks them up. And sure enough, Bear comes wandering by shortly after. Fox, Bear says, where did you get all these delicious fish? And Fox said, well, it wasn't easy. I can show you exactly what to do, but you have to promise to do exactly as I say. Well, of course, says Bear, anything to get myself some fish. So Fox says, all right, follow me across the lake. So Bear does. And Fox says, you see that spot over there with all of those fish? Yes, I do, says Bear. And would you like to have some of those fish too? Yes, I would, says Bear. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Put a hole in the ice, have a seat on that hole, put your tail inside of the hole, and wait. Bear says, I can do that, that's easy. Fox says, stand per or sit perfectly still and don't even think because the fish can hear your thoughts. And Bear says, well, okay, I can do that. So Bear sits patiently and waits. And Fox stands for a while and watches him. And he, wa he, he comes over across the lake and he's still watching him. And he is laughing and laughing because there's Bear sitting perfectly still waiting for his fish. Eventually, Fox goes home for the night and Fox is glad that he does go home because it snows and snows all night long. As a matter of fact, the next day when Fox goes to check on Bear, he sees, instead of Bear, a great big pile of snow. Hmm, says Fox, did Bear go home? So Fox creeps closer and closer to Bear and finds Bear did not go home. Bear has been waiting all night long. And as Fox, Fox creeps closer and closer, he says to Bear, now Bear, wake up, it's time, pull out your tail. So Bear shakes off all of the snow and he tugs and he pulls until snap, out comes Bear. And Bear turns around and he looks, there's no fish. And he turns around and he looks again. <gasps> There's no tail! Fox Bear says, what have you done to my beautiful bushy tail? And Fox laughs and laughs and Fox runs away. And now you know the story of how the bear lost his tail. And maybe if you're out, you might see some bears being nice and grumpy and growly. Now you know why. They're remembering their friend Fox and how he tricked him into losing his tail. The end. Very nice. So I think the moral of that story is it's not nice to play tricks on your friends. Sometimes some things might happen that you were not expecting, right? All right, very good. Let me put my bears away and I have another fun little game for you. We're gonna play, where is Bear? Here's Bear right here, okay? And he is a little mischievous. He likes to run around and hide. We're gonna sing a song 
about where bear is going. And uh, caregivers, we're practicing using our positional words on, above, about, near. Those are kind of confusing for our friends, so it's always great to practice it. So if you catch on to the tune with me, sing along, all right? It goes like this. Bear over here, bear over there. Where's that bear? He's hiding in my hair, silly bear. Very good. Bear over here, bear over there. Now where is bear? He's in my chair. See him in my chair over here? Silly bear. Bear over here, bear over there. Now where is bear? He's floating through the air. Very good. Bear over here, bear over there. Now where is bear? He's above the square. See how he's above the square? Bear over here, bear over there. Now where is bear? Bear is on the stairs. Let me see if I can make him stay. Very good job. Let's do it one more time, okay? Let's practice where bear can be. Should I change where he is? Bear over there, bear over here. Now where is bear? He's above my hair. Bear over here, bear over there. Now where is bear? He is under the square. Bear over here, bear over there. Now where is bear? He's falling in the air. Bear over here, bear over there. Now where's bear? He's next to the stairs. Good job, everyone. Bear likes to get away with things and go find things he shouldn't be doing, doesn't he, silly bear? Okay, the last thing, or the second to last thing I have for you is your craft today. All right, it is a super simple craft. Let me show you what you need. You need a paper plate. You need glue. I like liquid glue, but any kind of glue will work. And scissors and crayons. Um, you saw some of our bears. You can color it any that we're gonna make a bear today and it is a bear mask, okay? And like I said, you saw some of our bears so you can color it any color you would like, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is color your paper plate. I'm making a brown bear mask. Let me show you the final result. All I did was I colored my paper plate, whatever color you want it to be, cut out the middle. See how I cut out the middle here? And then with the scraps, I made two little bear ears. And caregivers, you're welcome to add a popsicle stick to make it a mask, but you don't have to, okay? And that is our simple bear craft today. And then you can practice where your bear is going to hide, all right? And lastly, I wanted to share with you some books that I love in the library all about bears. I have three for you. And the first one is really funny and it's by Erin Blaby and it's called Don't Call Me Bear. And it's all about how koala bear is not actually a bear. The next book is called the Bear's Garden. And this is actually based on a true story. It's by Marcy Colleen, The Bear's Garden. And it's based on a true story from New York City called Bear Garden. And they found a teddy bear in it. So they're imagining what they think happened to make that uh, bear garden. And my last story is Polar Bear's Story. This is a nonfiction book um, by Harriet Blackford and Manja Stojic. And it's all about polar bears and what they do on a day-to-day -day basis in story form. A wonderful introduction to nonfiction for our youngest friends. And those are my stories today. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. And I hope to see you very soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be the first to find out when we have new fun and informative videos for you. Orange County Library System is your place to learn, grow, connect.